Hello everyone, this is John for PokerVIP.com and in this video I'm doing a real sort of beginner's class. Um, a lot of the times in my videos I play four tables, uh, I talk about the action pretty quickly, I run through things I expect most people to know but some people might be struggling um, to keep up or to just understand what I'm saying. So in this one I'm doing a real sort of back to basics, um, starting at the lowest stakes on Sky Poker, which you can sign up to through pokervip.com forward slash deals or in the link in the description below. I've got two tables um, and I'm just going to talk about each hand I open, each hand I call with, uh, the hands I'm raising, the hands I'm going all in with and then also you know once we see the flop uh, the community cards, then why I'm betting, why I'm calling, um, and just basically how to play each hand as well as possible. So, to start off straight away, um, you can see that I'm here face palm. I'll actually make it so I'm sat in the same position on both tables, which Sky Poker lets you do effortlessly. I've got four pounds, uh, the blinds are 2p, 4p, so basically, if you're starting out poker, reading like poker strategy articles, reading books, watching videos, everything will generally be based off, unless they tell you otherwise, 100 big blind poker. Now 100 big blinds is simply, if the big blind here is 4p, I've got 4 pounds, so I've got 100 times the blinds. So that's basically how all basic strategy will be summed up. That's If someone talks about going all in with a hand pre-flop, it will be with 100 big blinds. The reason I'm saying this is it changes a lot. If you say if you only have say one pounds, uh, then you shouldn't be playing certain hands. Then you should be going all in more frequently. Then you should be doing X, Y, and Z um, very differently. So always try and have a hundred big blinds. Um, always try and have auto top upon, which will basically mean if you lose twenty p before the next hand starts, it'll make sure you have the four pounds again. Now we're in the big blind, obviously. Blinds are always posted. Small blind and big blind. I'm sure all of you know that. But like I say, this is for absolute beginners. Here we can just go ahead and check. We we can raise because we can get called with worse hands. As uh, Some might call us with ace-10, uh, ace-2, ace-3, king-queen, and so on, pre-flop. The only problem is we create a bigger pot and we're going to be out of position. So to be honest, I'd play it like we're just set mining. And by set mining, that just means that we want to make three of a kind. We want to hit a five on the flop. If we don't, we can just go ahead and check fold. Obviously, there are circumstances where, say, the, the flop came two, three, four. Then we've got the over pair, the straight draw. Uh, same if it came like three, four, six. But generally, we are just looking to hit a five there to uh, be able to continue with the pot. Once we miss and he got better, then we can just go ahead and fold. Ace three here, um, the hand that I folded on the bottom left table. It's not a hand you want to call raises without a position. Uh, you want to sort of have a much stronger hand. Um, if you've got like a big ace, you can re-raise. You know, put in the third bet pre-flop. Uh, a lot of people get you know confused. They call with just ace something a lot of the time. Any suited ace is not what you want to do. Also here, when I just folded the three five off suit, you might hear people say about value and you know getting a good price to call. Well, to be honest, with a hand like three five off suit, you should just never really be thinking about playing it. Um, I would check if it was I was in the big blind. I'd probably fold if I was in the small blind. It's just a very junkish kind of hand. What you are going to find in these games is a lot of people will be limping, um, so you, they're just posting the, the the size of the big blind, so limp for 4p, and you see lots of flops. When we're coming into a pot, we should be raising. Now, here's actually a really good um, example of why we shouldn't limp. So we've got King Jack here, we're in the small blind. People might say, why don't you just call and see a flop? The reason I want to raise, and the reason I raise quite big, is because I think I'm going to have the best hand a lot, and I think I can win post-flop a lot. A lot of the times I go ahead and make a continuation bet here, which just means to bet, you know, say 60p. However, once three people call, I don't think we're going to win the pot often enough. Um, people get lots of flush draws, lots of straight draws. If it was against one opponent, say um, Chinared folded, uh, Mikita Mo folded, and for the Thrill uh, called, I would go ahead and bluff this flop. I'd go ahead and represent that I had a big hand. Um, because the, the likeliness is he didn't make a pair, he doesn't have a strong hand. Um, so I can represent having a big hand. 
But against three opponents, you're just hoping for the best, and it would be more luck than skill involved. Even though we have um, a gut shot here, we're not getting the right price to call, and we can only make £1.93 if we hit. Also, we don't know if a king is any good if we hit that. Checks around, we see 7 8, ace jack, and pocket tens. So, actually, two people in with better hands than I had, but like I was saying before, I can actually win without hitting. You know, like I say, if I was against one person, I might have been able to, you know, bet and get them to fold the race high, uh, bet twice and get them to fold a pair. So it's just something to look out for. These games are a little bit tricky. Um, once you start playing sort of um, 10p, 20p and higher, you're going to see a lot less limping, a lot more straightforward poker. But that is what makes it fun. And, you know, this is just a learning curve if you're starting off poker and you're just trying to learn and get in loads of interesting situations, then this is uh, perfect for you. King 9 suited here, we can go ahead and raise. Now it's interesting, you'll see that I folded King 7 suited on this left hand table. That's because I was under the gun, I was in first position to act. So I've got lots of people behind me to call. However with King 9 suited I'm in the cutoff and there's only three people, you know, so I can steal the blinds basically. Here I'm actually going to go ahead and bet, and I'm going to bet around 20p, you know, two thirds of the pot. So okay, here is a, here's a point of no value, 4 9 suited is just a fold there. And as you can see, I won without hitting a pair. I just represented that I had something. They all folded. I risked 20p to win 36. And we basically just make a lot of profit by doing that. Also, what Skypo could do off there. Okay, actually, sorry, before that, interesting one here. I could raise the sixes, because um, I think he's going to call with worse. Um, and I can also win without hitting. So here I can actually just represent that I've got, like, a king. You know, we just turn our hand into a bluff, basically, and he folds pretty quickly. And the reason we sort of are turning our hand into a bluff, even though we might be getting worse to fold, is... Any two cards he has are probably going to have some equity versus us, which basically means we can get beat. Um, if, you know, say a 9 comes on the turn, he might have just a random 9. So we get those hands to fold. Here with face 8, I'm actually going to lead with my straight draw. I can get a 7 to fold, maybe. I can get jack-queen to call. Um, so I can get sort of better hands to fold, worse hands to call, and so on. We get min-raised here. Now, a min-raise often means strength in these games. Uh, he's going to have a lot of straights. Um... Some f big flush draws, some sets. So I'm actually going to go ahead and fold. Um, just because if I do hit, I don't know if I get paid and I don't know if it's any good. Obviously here is a bad example because I made my straight. And the more I think of it, actually I made a mistake there. I was getting too good of a price to fold. Um, no matter what he has, I should have actually called. So I do apologise. I've got an up and down straight draw. And it was just a min raise. So I do actually apologise there. But you can see the guy had two pair. Um, and a blocker. We uh, we all make mistakes, so I do apologise. That is a pretty easy call, and then you just have to be cautious once you hit. The only thing that makes you not want to call, and the reason why I was thinking is because there's a flush draw out there, and um, that limits my outs. Maybe he's got a flush draw. So if I hit the jack or the the six of diamonds, then you know, I, I, I automatically lose versus a flush. If he's got a set, the board could pay on the turn. But um, well, once we get in that price, we do actually have to call and see the turn. Not the biggest mistake we'll ever make, but uh, one that we did make. Here's a good good spot to raise. Um, I, I'm making it five times the blind here. I feel like it gets them to fold a lot pre-flop, uh, which is our main aim with a hand like this. Uh, once they do call, though, we have a decent-sized pot. We have a decent hand, we've got an ace, uh, so we can you know, go ahead and play. On this one, I'm actually just going to call because I feel like I can have the best hand. And I don't think raising achieves too much because if I raise and he goes all in, I have to fold. Um, I'd rather just call and see if I can hit an ace or a 10 or see you know, what the turn brings. Maybe I can bluff, maybe I can fold, maybe I can call again with ace high. This Mondo 1985 probably doesn't have a great deal of anything. Reese can have a straight draw or flush draw. Now he bets really big so it becomes an easy fold.
I guess he had a three, a six, or maybe like the Jack of Hearts with something. Okay, so interesting one here. We're on the button, so we are officially the dealer in this hand. I go ahead and min raise the button with an ace and a seven. The reason I'm doing this is actually just to steal the blinds. Remember, these blinds are posted without people seeing their cards. You know, they're forced to put money in the pot. So I want to go ahead and attack that, and, I, and a min raise, you know, gets a lot of folds. A lot of the times I think about checking a 10 jack 6 flop, but this China red guy has actually been folding a lot to continuation bets. So I just wanted to put him to the test there. Once he calls, I'm just going to check in there, sort of give up here. He can have a straight, a flush, uh, a pair, two pair, a set. Um, so I'm pretty happy to just go ahead and fold my ace high. King four, um, even though it's suited, is a fold. And again, you know, don't limp there. You don't want to limp. You know, you want to be either folding or raising pre-flop. Uh, limping is just generally not very good and something you shouldn't do. few interesting hands going on here. Flush draw gets there on table one. Be interesting to see what everyone has. Ace ten wins, okay. <clears throat> um Sky Poker is only open to UK, Ireland and Finland. Uh weird weird three territories there. It's something you don't often hear of. But um if you want somewhere like Sky Poker, you know, soft games, no hoods, um, then I'd go for Unibet. Unibet's open to a lot more countries, a lot more territories. Three fours a fold. After Unibet, you then think about Bet Victor, uh, which is part of the uh, MPN network. If you need any help though, anytime, leave a message on the forum, leave a comment below. Hit the site chat with us button, send an email to hello at pokervip.com, um, add us on Skype, and we can always uh, find the site that's best for you. Easy uh, fold with 4 8, easy fold with 9 deuce. Not many big hands yet, um, 15 minutes left of the video though, I hope you're enjoying it. Leave any comments below about the video as well, if this is something that suits you, if you want to see more of these, if it is a bit too beginner-ish. If there's anything I can improve on, or just any questions about the hands in particular. Queen 7 suited here, I open blind versus blind. I was potentially just trying to steal his 4p and get my 2p back. Uh, once the flop comes 9 deuce deuce, I can just go ahead and continuation bet all the time there. Um, and expect to win the, the pot a lot, because he's not going to have a 9 that often, he's not going to have a deuce that often. He's not going to have a big hand that often, because he just called pre-flop. So I'm just trying to steal the money again. King Jack suited here, I think he's a really easy raise on the button. Once we've got two limpers, it's a nice, strong, playable hand. Interesting flop because there's obviously the uh, flush draw out. So I'm just going to make my bet, you know, just over half pot. I'm not happy at all if I get raised. But I need to protect versus the flush draw. And uh, also, you know, he might have a straight draw like 4-5. Once I get raised here, I don't ever expect him to, him to be bluffing. Um, so I'm actually going to go ahead and fold. If I had the king of diamonds, I'd be going all in. Um, but I expect him to have a flush here, a set, two pair, or at least the ace of diamonds. So I don't really want to gamble there. I like the way I played it. If he calls, I can get value on the turn and river. But like I say, people just don't bluff there that often in these games. So be comfortable folding. Um, the one thing you don't want to do is to call there and then go all in on the turn. You should be making your decision on the flop. The reason I bet was to get value from draws. The reason I bet was to get value from under pairs. The reason I bet wasn't to get raised so I can go all in. So it does kind of change from going for value to then understanding that we'll probably be or, you know, not doing that well versus any of his hands. Okay, so we finally get a big hand here. Pocket aces, the nuts, a hand that we should never be folding pre-flop and be trying to get in as much money as possible. I just make my standard opening raise, which is three times the blind. Not the greatest flop for us here, uh, lots of draws, uh, people can obviously have you know, two pairs set, straights and everything, but um, we've got to go ahead and make the continuation bet. We get called and we get a great turn card, um, improves nothing unless he's got like queen deuce randomly, so he's going to bet and I'm going to bet pretty big. We actually get the all in here, he shows queen 10 so he's dead to a queen 10 or jack, he misses and we win a big pot. Now. 
people might have checked that turn to trap, but to be honest, just don't. What you're going to do is you're going to allow them to check and to hit a draw for free. What you're going to do is allow them to check a queen um, so we don't get paid off on the river. Just go ahead and bet. And also, there is an argument for us just going all in there. Um, you know, he only we bet 80p, he's only got £1.5. But, you know, I don't want it to uh, make it look that strong. Um, I, I, can't, I want action, obviously. A couple of easy folds there. King 5 I checked once everyone limped, you know, I can hit a flush or two pair or something. Don't call here with the deuce 3, it's just an easy fold. Ten jack here we can just call, see if we can make a straight or two pair. Not a good flop for us, so I'm just gonna go ahead and check give up. Just like that. Two four on the buttons just to fold. Interesting pot here. Guy's representing that he's got an ace. Very strong line. He should only really have an ace there to be betting that big. Five nine off suit, obviously just a junky hand. Now, if you're ever playing live poker and you hear someone starting to sing Dolly Parton uh, working 9 to 5, um, then you probably know they've got 9-5 off suit. If someone says they've got the, the, the Dolly Hand, the Motown, something like that, it's probably going to be 9 to 5. I'm working 9 to 5. Just in case you didn't know the song, that's it. Bit of a tell, people give away in poker. Or, you know, it's like the working hand, the job hand. Some people do actually say it out loud, um, if you listen closely, and you can pick it up, you can instantly put them on a hand. Actually, sorry, the Motown hand is Jack 5, for the Jackson 5, uh, This, but this is the uh, Dolly Parton, or the working man's hand. Also, if you do sign up with Sky Poker um, with us, I would love to send you out... Um, some t-shirts. If you sign up deposit, let me know. I'll send you out a bag of merchandise. Some really cool Poker VIP t-shirts and patches. Um, I bet once on this flop because I hope people will fold a lot of hands. Um, even though I do only have bottom pair. But people can fold, you know, Ace-10, King-Queens, King-Jacks. Might even fold a 3 or even like pocket 4. So I get some better hands to fold. Once I'm getting 20 to 1 on the turn with a pair when there's a draw out, I, I have to call. I'm not confident I'm ahead, but he can have a flush draw. Once he bets the pot, though, I'm pretty confident he has at least a flush. Hopefully Greg calls so we can see it. Maybe he's just a massive bluffer, who knows, but I can't call with a deuce, especially if little Greg sat behind me. So I think we're winning pretty small, thanks to the ace's hand. It's all about just slowly but surely. Nice, consistent winning. Um, if anyone says the Doyle Brunson hand as well, that's the 10 deuce offsuit. And it's called the Doyle Brunson because he won two World Series of Poker main events with it. I'd say the reason I probably mentioned live poker is Sky plays very similarly, similarly to live poker. Um, a lot more limpers, a lot more recreational players. Here's a good... Time to raise. King 10 is not the strongest hand, but people are calling with a lot worse. And he makes a good top pair. And it will always have a good kicker. 
I'm going to go ahead and bet here. Hope to get people to fold, but the reason I can bet is because I have got a gut shot. The, the jack gives me the nuts, maybe a king's good. Once I get called it in two spots by two players, I want to go ahead and check. And uh, once I miss my king and my jack, I'm just folding, but we gave it a best shot. We uh, tried to win the pot with nothing. Seems a guy had 9 10, and I guess his Greg had at least a queen to be able to call there. So as you can see, you know, we've got King 10, TD Matt limps, we raise. So we've got King 10 versus 9-10. If that flop comes 10 high, we're going to win some money. <clears throat> and uh, I know you might be thinking, but you didn't win. You know, he hit a 9, he hit two nines. But honestly, in the long run, this will make you money. You've just got to keep at it. Now, I talk about seeing the blinds. Queen 5 is just not a good hand to do it with. We want to have something that's kind of playable. Nine ten suited, a hand we all love to play. Let's go ahead and raise that. We can play nine ten suited from any position as well. It's obviously a hand we want to see flops with. And um, we're gonna go ahead and bet here, see if we can win with just our ten high. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and bet again here because I think I can represent that I've got a king. I think I'm getting to fold a four. He might have a flush, um, but a lot of times he's just going to go ahead and fold like he does. So that's our first proper bluff, but it makes sense. You know, we can have a king. He's not going to have a king that often. Um, he's going to just have a bad one pair. So we can go ahead and just represent it and uh, get that bluff through. Five six suited. A hand we don't have to play from this position, but let's face it, a hand we all like to play. Um, flop a flush draw. Just going to go and bet half pot here. Um, if Greg went all in, I'd call. If Reese raises, I'd weirdly fold because I've only got a six side flush draw. Good turn for us here because he's going to have a king a lot of the time, so he's not going to be able to find a fold. So I'm just going to bet my flush four value. Sometimes he's going to have a full house with the you know deuces or sevens. Sometimes he's going to have a better flush. But like I say, a lot of the time he's just going to have a king here. I think I've got the best hand. I'm going to go for value and I'm going to go all in. He does have a king, um, which we thought he did. We get all his money and we make some tidy profit. Pretty much a perfect thing to happen. Deuce 3 suited we can actually call here because it's suited. Um, but we are not looking to make a pair. We want to make a straight flop a massive hand, make three of a kind, flop a full house. If we don't, we just give up on the flop, on the pot, on the flop, blah, blah, blah. Interesting one here, Reese likes to min raise turns with flush draws from what we think we've seen and then he bets big when he hits. He actually just has a 10? Wow. Okay, so Reese is basically someone who overvalues bad hands. Um, if you're playing these games, make a note that he plays those hands in that way. He check raises a bad 10 on the turn. He goes for big value once the flush gets there. Once there's a straight, once there's three of a kind. Um, so yeah, a player that um, you can go ahead and sort of call down with, you know, maybe not the best hand that you've had, but a hand that might be his. Queen 9, we're going to go try and steal uh, this place big blind. I'm sorry about that clinking noise, that's me having a drink. You'd be surprised how dry your mouth gets whilst making training videos. I'm going to go ahead and bet my queen with a straight draw, purely for value. 
Eight nine, good flop for us here. Player limped. We thought, hold on a minute, eight nine suited. That plays nicely. Let's go ahead and raise and take control of the pot. Once we get led into, I'm just going to go ahead and call. He might have a better hand than us. We might get a bad turn card. We're in position. It's a small bet. So I just want to go ahead and just call. And we're just going to call the turn. Um, I'm not going to fold in this hand um, unless he goes ahead and goes all in or something. I think he's going to have a better hand a decent amount of the time, but not enough. Um, I've got top pair, I've got blockers to the straight, so it's just a pretty easy call for me. He actually just had a better 9 all along, um, so we kept the pot small. We didn't think about raising, we didn't need to find out where we were, as some people might say. We got to just go ahead and call down, lose, how much did we lose? 61p. Um, and get away kind of, you know, harm free. Gonna go ahead and sit out and call it a video um, once the big blind hits us. Now, the reason you want to sit out next BB, that basically just means sit out before you're next in the big blind. The reason you want to do that is, remember, we've been posting blinds. We've been paying to play as such. Why don't we get our free hands, you know, because we, we don't need to post a blind when we're under the gun or on the button. So we might as well play until those blinds are about to hit us again because it's costing us nothing to see our cards. Um... So if we pick up a big hand, we can go ahead and play it and hopefully win some money. And it costs us nothing to do so. Whilst you're here, make sure you go to the Poker VIP school. It's a completely unique, free-to-use um, school. You know, there's videos, there's articles, there's exams, there's um, even just fun stories, lifestyle, motivation, um, hypnotherapy, just everything in there that you could ever need. PokerVIP.com forward slash poker school I believe let me just load up my page and I'll tell you exactly what it is yeah I say pokervip.com forward slash school or you can just find it along the top here in the tab I'll show you that quickly in a second as well okay so eight four off was our last fold so whilst you're on the poker school you'll see feature content which is basically just new stuff so starting hands if you're a beginner bet sizing in poker which is really cool well written article by weasel poker and rational thinking a 200 and L Stan James video made by my play myself. So, if you're playing the small stakes, but you want to watch and enjoy how people play, you know, 500 euro pots, that's a really good fun one to watch. Sample lessons, opening ranges. Well, an opening range is just hands we open with. Uh, you know, what hands are we raising? So aces or ace king or ace ten. You know, hands that would be an opening in there. Then you'll see coaching videos, GTO, big 400 and L games, Zoom games, speed. You know, strategy articles, like I said, some fun ones. Dan Bilzerian, what do millionaire poker players have in common? Poker starting hand charts. So we've got everything in there covered. And as you can see, it's separated into beginner, intermediate, advanced. If you want to play one-on-one -on -one heads up poker. If you're a tournament player. Or even if you want to try your hand at PLO, at live poker. Or even speed, plus the mental game stuff I was talking about. Also, whilst you're on Poker VIP, make sure you check out all our deals. This is where you sign up. As you can see, Sky Poker's there. 30% rake back, £10 free, £500 deposit bonus. And like I was saying, we've got Unibet, Betfair, which you can use PayPal with, Party Poker, iPoker, Poker Stars. You know, we've got everywhere covered. And uh, always you can hit this chat with us box down in the bottom. Then you can go to promotions, which is just extra rate races, money on top, money on top. The poker school I talked about, and then my favorite part of it, the poker forum. If you're new to the game, if you're experienced, if you're anything at all, this has to be the best forum for you. It's the fastest growing poker forum in the world. Um, friendly people, everyone just wants to learn, everyone wants to enjoy the game, everyone has a bit of banter in the lifestyle or general discussion forums. So, um, like I was saying, this was a video for complete beginners or people who are just struggling a little bit and wanted to go back to basics. Sign up to Sky Poker, pokervip.com forward slash deals. Hit the link in the description below. Leave any comments, and I really wish you the best of luck in 2015. I hope it's the year you've been looking for and waiting for, and I hope all your poker dreams come true. So, this was John for pokervip.com. Good luck.